This is Darren McCulley with Professional Control Corporation. I'm going to show you today how to commission a Siemens G120 drive with a CU250S-2 control unit, which is used to control motors with encoders. So first of all, I've created a drive or created a project in uh, TIA Portal Start Drive version 15, and I've gone to my project view. So now I'm going to add a device. And I'm going to choose my drives, G120 control unit, CU250S-2 vectors, what I have, and my firmware is 4.6. I'll click OK. So that'll get into my network view, my device view, and then I need to add a power module. Go to the hardware catalog. I've got a 480 volt frame size A, 0.55 kW drive without uh, without the filter and the, and the part numbers down here. I know this is correct so I'll drag it over press my power module and now I can commission I can commission the drive. So I'll go here to commissioning and commissioning wizard. So since I have an encoder I want to choose expert and next and then I'm going to uncheck technology and extended messaging because I don't need those. And my set point type is speed control with encoder. Next. Uh, I'm going to use digital inputs and outputs and an analog set point. So I'll keep this as my choice for the control. I have a NEMA 60 hertz motor with SI units on it. And my voltage for the input to the drive is 480 volts. And I'm going to choose high overload for vector drives because I'm going to assume mine's a conveyor. Low overload would be for fans and pumps. I don't have a brake resistor or filter. Next. And now I can choose to enter my motor data from this. And then I have an induction motor. My rated motor current is 0.57 amps. 0.21 for the KW, 0.75 for the power factor, and 1650, 1650 for the speed. Click next. There's no motor holding brake. Next. I can change my ramp up time. We'll do two seconds for up and down. Next. So I have a conveyor, so I'll just do a standard drive. I'll keep my motor ID inhibited for now and do the complete calculations for the motor parameters. Next. Now here's the encoder information. So there's three ways that you can connect your encoder to this CU250S-2 control unit. One is the terminal interface. The other is using the D sub connector on the bottom of the control unit. And another is if you have a drive click encoder, you can connect it with the drive click interface. I'll assume mine's a terminal interface and a 1024 HTL encoder. So next, and that completes my commissioning wizard. So now I want to download this to the drive. So I'll click the download icon. I'm connected using my USB port and the US, mini USB port in front of the drive. Start search. So I found my drive. Now I'll load the configuration to the drive. I want to have this checked, save RAM to ROM. And I'll click load and it takes a little bit for it to load to the drive over the USB port. Seems a little bit slower, but be patient. So now that that is done downloading, I can go online and optimize my drive. So go online. We can tell I'm online when I get the orange banner up here. And so I will go to motor optimization. Give me a warning. So I will maximize this window. I have stationary measurement that I can choose. I'm going to activate that. 
I actually do not have a motor, so I can't perform these. I'm just showing you what you should do. So once you activate the measurement, you can activate the master control. And then you get your green switch on. You turn it on, and then it'll run through the, the um, motor, I, motor ID procedure. Again, I don't have a motor, so I'm just going to stop it. And I'll deactivate that measurement, though you wouldn't need to do that because yours would you'd wait till yours is run through your entire motor ID. So then the next measurement I would want to do with the encoder is the rotating measurement or vector control. Activate that measurement. You can set the enable and then perform that. Again, it's a rotating measurement, so your drives your motor is going to turn, so you need to make sure everything's safe to do that. Once it's done, it'll stop again since I don't have a motor. Well, mine faulted out since I don't have a motor. Just acknowledge that. And I'll deactivate the measurement, which you shouldn't have to do. Deactivate control. And now the, the drive and motor are ready to run. The only other thing you may need to be concerned about is if the motor is turning in the correct direction. If it's not, then you can actually change that um, in the parameters set. So we'll go to parameters and operating mode and current controller power module. Give me a little bit of room here. And under pulse width modulation, there's this reverse output phase sequence which would be the same as reversing two leads on the motor. So it'll make the motor ro rotate in the, the opposite direction for a forward command. So if you want to do, if you need to do that, you can turn that on. Um, but since you have a motor encoder, you need to also swap the motor encoder signal. So if you go to motor encoder, there's this little inversion box. Check that. And now you've inverted the, this, signal for the encoder so they're the encoder and the motor are going in the same direction for a positive and you're all done and if you've made changes that you want to keep then we need to go back and save those so we can go back to commissioning save reset save ram to the eprom we'll do that now everything's saved in our drive we can power cycle and not lose any of our changes Next, what we want to do is save this into our project so we can have a backup. So we'll go offline and we'll upload the drive to the, to the project. And once that's done, we're all complete. You can save your project. And now you've commissioned a CU250S with an encoder. So we'll wait until this is done and we can save it. So now that it's all uploaded in my project, I'll save my project and I'm all done. To see more great videos like this, visit pccweb.com and thank you for your time. Bye.